soit une salle bonne. Seventeen. Good morning and welcome to Christchurch for Sunday virtual worship. Today is the feast of the presentation of Christ in the temple. So today is the day when we remember Mary and Joseph took Jesus to the temple in Jerusalem to perform the purification rites as were required by the Jewish law. Today also marks the moment when we turn our eyes away from Christmas and instead we turn and we look towards Easter. So we move our eyes from the crib to the cross. Just before we begin, if you would like to make a donation to Christchurch, then the link in Facebook is on a previous post. And if you're watching us on YouTube, it's in the comments. Um, obviously, as you probably aware, we are struggling financially at the moment due to the lockdown. So if you would normally put money on the plate on a Sunday morning, if you could make that donation online virtually instead, it would be very gratefully received. Thank you. Also, if you find that you yourself are struggling in the lockdown with for whatever reason, please, please do get in touch. It can be practical problems, emotional problems, financial problems. There is help available. Please don't struggle on your own. Please do get in touch. Um, and we can either help you ourselves or signpost you um, to other agencies that might be able to help as well. So we're just going to take a moment to still ourselves as we come before the Lord this morning in worship. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Dear friends, we have celebrated the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now we recall the day on which he was presented in the temple when he was offered to the Father and shown to his people as a sign of his coming among us. Simeon and Anna recognised him as their Lord as we today sing of his glory. And so we celebrate both the joy of his coming and his searching judgment, looking back to the day of his birth and forward to the coming days of his passion. And so we pray together. Loving God, we have come to worship you. Help us to pray to you in faith, to sing your praise with gratitude, and to listen to your word with eagerness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
shine, Jesus shine, fill this land with the Father's glory, blaze, Spirit blaze, set our hearts on fire, flow, river flow, flood the nations with grace and mercy, set Is display your likeness ever changing from glory to glory? Mirrors here, may our lives tell your story. Shine on me, shine on me, shine, Jesus, shine, fill this land with the Father's glory. Hear the words of our Saviour Jesus Christ. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me shall never walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Therefore, let us bring our sins into his light and confess them in penitence and in faith. And so we pray. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought and said and done. Through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us out of darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. So may God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father. Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. We bow our heads for the collect, the special prayer for today. Almighty and ever-living God, clothed in majesty, whose beloved Son was this day presented in the temple in substance of our flesh, Grant that we may be presented to you with pure and clean hearts by your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading today is from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 2, verse 14 to the end. Since, therefore, the children share flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared the same things, so that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is the devil, 
and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by the fear of death. For it is clear that he did not come to help angels, but the descendants of Abraham. Therefore he had to become like his brothers and sisters in every respect, so that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God, to make a sacrifice of atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself was tested by what he suffered, he is able to help those who are being tested. Here ends the reading. Our Gospel reading is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 22 to 40. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus 
to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many may be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher, she was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment she came and began to praise God and speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Israel. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favour of God was upon him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So may I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. On New Year's Eve, our family stayed up to welcome in the year 2021. Normally we would have had a party with friends and joined together to celebrate, but as this was not possible this year, and there was just us, we were not sure whether to bother staying up or not. However, we decided in the end that we were going to stay up till midnight, not so much to welcome in 2021, but to make sure that 2020 definitely finished. Like many people, I could not wait to get 2020 out of the way. With the new vaccine having already been rolled out at the end of December and the possibility of maybe being able to go on holiday in the summer, I was excited about the new year, eager to move on and put this whole COVID thing behind us and start to try and get back to normal. But then we began the year with another lockdown and again, everything ground to a halt. We went back to working from home, homeschooling and all the other restrictions that we're living under, not least of which a closed church building. Now, please don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying that these restrictions are wrong, quite the opposite. I have taken way too many COVID funerals to believe that lockdown is wrong. But I don't like it. And all my excitement at the start of 2021 has evaporated as I'm living through the reality of a year that starts in lockdown despite the hope of the vaccine. Life does not always turn out how we quite hoped it would. Things happen to change our plans that we were not expecting. Dreams are sometimes put on hold or maybe even abandoned altogether as we find our life going down a different route. Mary and Joseph had been told that Jesus was the Messiah, and even though he was still only little, his life thus far had been a roller coaster of highs and lows where God had guided them continually to keep this precious baby safe. And then they come to the temple and they meet Simeon and Anna which initially is very exciting as they both proclaim that Jesus is indeed the promised Messiah, as if Mary and Joseph could have been in any doubt by this point. But then things don't happen quite as expected because Simeon says to Mary those fatal words, a sword will pierce your own soul too. I wonder what type of Messiah they had thought Jesus would grow up to be. Would they, like most of the Jews at that point, be expecting a mighty warrior to deliver them from the Roman occupation? I don't know. 
But I doubt that Mary was expecting back then that in just a few years time, she will be sitting at the foot of the cross watching her son tortured to death. Today marks the day when we turn away from the excitement of Christmas and we look forward to the crucifixion and then the resurrection. Today marks a change in the mood from the celebration of Christmas to the fasting of an approaching Lent. Many of us are suffering at the moment, albeit in different ways, some through loneliness or just being fed up of staying at home, some through immense financial difficulties and the devastation of lost jobs and incomes, some because we are sick, either with COVID or other illnesses and having to manage those illnesses during a time of strain on the NHS, and some because we've been devastated by the loss of a loved one. Whatever your struggle, many of us are struggling. So where is God in all of this? When God came to earth, he didn't come as a mighty warrior ready to fight and win against the Roman Empire. He came to save the Romans too. Jesus lived on earth as a child and then as a man, and he experienced life exactly the same way that we do. The reading from Hebrews that we heard earlier says that he had to become like us in every way so that he can then understand our sufferings, so that he can understand our pain and our distress because he too experienced loneliness, sickness, bereavement, financial insecurity. Jesus went through pain and suffering, and because he did, he understands our pain and our suffering. And he also understands our hopes and our joys. So where is God? God is right next to us, holding our hand, understanding the difficulties that we're facing, and giving us the strength to face the future with hope. Amen. So let us declare our faith in the words of the Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So let us pray. Revelation chapter 22. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing 12 crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. O oh dear Lord, the tree of life is for the healing of the nations, and we pray that you will heal us, revive us and restore us. Teach us how to live in your sight. Show us how to reach out and tell people we meet that you love them, that you died for them, and that you rose again to bring in the power of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, break out in our community the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Father God, once more we are praying for the healing of our land from COVID-19 and all it has caused us. We pray that the spread of the virus in all its forms will stop in this country and around the world. We pray for all NHS staff, for social care staff and all those tending the sick 
and supporting those who are depressed in spirit with the current level of restrictions. We pray for all chaplains and clergy who are trying to give pastoral care in parishes, hospitals and online who need rest and support themselves. We pray especially for all our young, whether in school or having homeschooling, that they will not give up but see a glimmer of hope coming nearer. May the adults around them, their teachers, parents or grandparents, be able to give wise advice and find courage from the real faithfulness of God. We need you so much, O oh Lord, young ones, parents and the elderly. We pray for those, especially today, with the heart cry of the bereaved, that they will be able to carry on and find comfort safe in your arms. We thank you for the vaccines, O oh Lord, for the wisdom of those who are delivering them. We thank you, Father, for the kindness of those delivering food parcels and those who are taking care of the homeless. Father, we pray that you would show us how we can do little things to cheer up those people who live close to us. For we will overcome in Jesus' name his power from age to age the same. Amen. Believing the promises of God as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. God wants us to live in peace with one another. So the peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace, peace be, be with you. you. Peace be with 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 you. Christ, whose glory fills the skies, fill you with radiance and scatter the darkness from your path. Amen. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, gladden your eyes and warm your heart. Amen. Christ, the day spring from on high, draw near to guide your feet into the way of peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So go in the light and peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Troubled sea, oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea.